Well, welcome to worship. We're glad that you're here with us. Let us worship God. Give thanks to the Lord and call on God's name. Make known God's deeds among the nations. Proclaim the greatness of God. Sing praises to the Lord. Shout out loud and sing for joy. Let it be known in all the earth. Great in our midst is the Holy One, the Lord our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for being with us in Jesus Christ. He heals us when we're sick, comforts us when sad and grieving, and inspires us to greater strength. Open our eyes to truly see him so that we may be even more thankful. Help us in understanding his place in our lives this day, and give us courage so that we may follow him better day by day. We pray this in your name. Amen. Please be seated. As we come to our time of confession, let's remember that Jesus longs for us to know life in all its fullness. To that end, he offers us renewal and refreshment, 
hope and forgiveness. These are his promises if we confess and repent and place our trust in him. Let us then offer our prayers together using the great prayer, group prayer in the bulletin, followed by our own personal silent confessions. Let us pray. God of all bounty, you have lavished us with good things, richly and freely, for us to enjoy. Yet we have failed to honor you as the source of all these blessings. In mercy, forgive our shameful pride and ingratitude. Fill us with the spirit of thanksgiving that all we say and do would demonstrate our full and glad acknowledgement that our abundances come from you. Inspire us to give to others freely and without reserve, even as you have given to us so bountifully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. the good news. Jesus' resurrection shows us that the grace of God is stronger than death and that the love of God has no boundaries. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are
so much. That was lovely. Our responsive reading today comes from many places in the Psalms that speak of giving thanks. While you won't need to read the Psalm reference in the parentheses, please join me in reading from our bulletin of Thanksgiving Psalms. We first give thanks for you, O God, our protector, guide, strength, and redeemer. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks, for your name is near. We give you thanks for this earth and that you provide and sustain all life. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonders. We are thankful for our nation, for our liberties and freedoms, and especially the ability to worship in peace. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. We thank you for our state of New Jersey, for the beautiful changes in the seasons, and for the bountiful harvests. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. We are thankful for our church, our presbytery, and our denomination. Help us to follow your path as a gathered people. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. We are thankful for each other, for our families and homes. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. We are thankful for the many blessings you have provided for each of us, food, shelter, health, and education. I will not want. Together. I will, I will give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord because of the Lord Most High. We have two readings today. The first from the Old Testament, from the prophecy of Ezekiel, chapter 34, beginning at verse 11. Hear the word of God. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. And that's our Old Testament reading. Just a few verses from the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter 18, beginning at verse 12. Jesus is telling the parable of the lost sheep, and he says, What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it, more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So, it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. That ends our lessons. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Each of us has a style. And I'm not talking about our clothes. I'm talking about the style, the way we interact with others. Some are outgoing and immediately friendly. Others are a bit more reserved. Some love to laugh out loud. Some have no sense of humor at all. 
You probably over noticed over the years that I like wordplay and puns, like saying, uh, he's so bright his father calls him son. Things like that. <laughs> I've been known to use puns and dad jokes on occasion, and they usually get more of a groan than a laugh, but that's okay. That's my style, and you've put up with it for over 32 years, so thank you. And when I've called a few of you on the phone, you've immediately recognized my voice, even before I could identify myself, although maybe you're just looking at caller ID, but you've probably recognized my voice. In the Gospel lesson today, Jesus says that he calls to his sheep and they recognize his voice. And then they follow him. I want to talk a little bit today about the shepherd that we know whose voice calls to us, whom we follow because he has a trustworthy style. I'd like to talk on two levels about this parable, that being the corporate, the gathered, and the individual. Those two sides to this story. In other words, he watches over us, but he also watches over each of us. First, let's look at how God shepherds. In the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, we get one style, and in the New Testament passage, we get another. The prophet Ezekiel was writing at a very low point in Israel's history, and he offers them hope that God would shepherd them corporately, together, as a nation, and bring them back into his promised blessings. This is back when the promised land had been split uh, amongst the 12 tribes. We had 10 up north in the uh, land of Israel, which had existed for about 200 years and then finally been overrun by its enemies. And then we had the southern uh, nation of Judah with just two of the 12 tribes that had continued on for another 150 years, but then had been conquered by the Babylonians. And the people there had been dispersed throughout the lands held by their conquerors. Instead of a strong central nation and a place of worship, they were separated and dispirited. Ezekiel offers his encouragement that even though their own leaders had let them down in guiding them, God himself would seek them out wherever they were and bring them back together into one flock and feed and protect them. In the same way, God cares for his sheep today. He watches over his church, calling it together for nurture and guidance, and there is a need for us to be together. I hear folks say, I, I don't need the church to worship, but how often do they when they don't come to church? One of my favorite ways of thinking about church is like that it's a charcoal grill. When we've been together and the fire of the Holy Spirit ignites us, we get roaring hot. Pull one coal out of the grill and set it aside and it will soon go out and be cold. But put it back in with the others and it'll heat back up and again, give off the energy of heat and light. God calls us together into his flock and promises to watch over us. And those promises are just as real today as they were back then. God watches over his church the way he watched over the nations of Israel and Judah. Whether together or dispersed, he promised to watch over his people and hold them together. But the image of the great shepherd of the sheep is different in the gospel writers. It begins the same, a hundred sheep, big flock gathering on the mountainside and the valleys of Judea. More likely, a village has combined their sheep into one large flock. And when one of the shepherds counts up the sheep and comes up one short, he alerts the others to watch the other 99 while he goes off in search of the one. Sheep are not known for their great intelligence and often wander off. For instance, one time a, a husband and wife sheep were out walking in the mountains and the husband sheep fell over the edge and broke his leg. And pretty soon the, the sheep ambulance arrived and the sheep paramedics were attending to him and uh, started to insert an intravenous uh, line into him and his sheep wife said, well, what are you doing that for? And the, the sheep paramedic said, well, that's so that uh, when we work on him, he won't, he won't know anything. And she said, well, you don't have to put it in because he don't know nothing already. <laughs> I know that was a bad joke. 
So our Old Testament and New Testament scenarios about sheep are similar up to this point. In both the group and the individual accounts, the shepherd will go and look for the lost sheep. But Jesus says that the sheep not only know his voice, but he's willing to lay down his life for the sheep, which is a quantum step in the concept of shepherding. The Old Testament prophet would not and did not take the idea of shepherding this far, but Jesus does. They know his voice, he shepherds them, he's trusted, and he is willing to give his own life that they not be lost. But to do that for a sheep, maybe it's easier to think of it in terms of children. One time on a sitcom about family life, there, were, there was an older brother and a middle sister and a very young uh, sister, and the parents were there shopping at the mall, and the three said, we'll, we'll take uh, our younger sister off with us shopping, and as they did, they got kind of caught up in shopping, and, and the younger sister wandered off. And before they knew it, they looked around and couldn't find her. Well, the parents did find her and didn't let on that she was safe. So when the two came back to talk to their parents and admit their mistake that they'd lost their little sister, they were a little taken back by the response because the parents had them going a little bit. and said, well, you know, we've got three kids. We've been telling them these things over and over. She knew to stay with you and she wandered off anyway. Just leave her out there. Let's, let's just go on about our day. Don't worry about her. It'll probably teach her a lesson. And they were like, what? You can't mean that. They were aghast in their reaction at the, what their parents were saying, how they seemed uncaring about their welfare. Because it was so out of character for their parents to sound at all uncaring about them. They knew the loving style of their parents, and they couldn't believe that their parents really felt that way. Of course, they soon let the kids in on the fact that the youngest of the family was okay, but not before shaking up their kids. But in the same way, it's the character of Christ to be concerned about the entire flock, but his love for them is also a love for each one. The love of God is for the whole flock, but it's also individual. And the voice that we recognize and trust is the one that comes to us when two or three or more are gathered, but also seeks us out when we're lost or alone, or in need on our own. The response that we offer to that love and care depends upon our sensitivity. It's hard to respond when we aren't sensitized to the offer and the gift, when we just don't recognize them. Think about sensitivity this way. During this month of November, we've had, at the beginning, some really warm days. It was almost like uh, Indian summer had pushed its way into November. But as the month has gone on, the coldness and even snow has found its way into the season. And it was about this time one year that I decided it was about time to have a fire in the fireplace for the first time. So I went outside to get some wood out of the wood pile, but my sense of uh, how many clothes I needed to wear had not caught up with the coldness of the season, and before you knew it, I was a popsicle. When Kay goes out and gets cold, she's a momsicle. But when I go out, I'm a popsicle. I mentioned puns at the beginning, so I kind of I set you up for that there would be a few in here. So anyway, to make matters worse, I went out there, uh, and before you knew it, I was very cold, and the wood pile did not cooperate either. It was pretty frozen together. It had rained a few days before, the cold had set in, things were all stuck together. And so I was able to get a few small pieces off the top of the pile, but the big pieces that I needed were kind of in the middle of the pile. And I tried to grab them and pull them out, and my fingers were numb, and I really couldn't get them very well. Needless to say, I really couldn't get many. We had a very small fire that day. If we haven't, if we haven't the sensitivity of perception to recognize the blessings of God that he's showered upon us as a people and as individuals, then we really can't respond properly. If we're numb 
to the ways that God offers us care and nurture and protection, then the thanks that we offer at this time of year will be shallow. And we won't be able to get a hold of any kind of true gratitude. And just as God, God's love comes to us corporate and, corporately and individually, our response can be both of those also. We can individually thank God for the ways he's blessed us through prayer and through dedicating or rededicating our lives to live as one of his family in the world. As we carve up the turkey, we'll pause to consider how blessed we are and offer our thanks of gratitude for health and strength and daily food. But one writer said, there are two kinds of gratitude. The sudden we feel for what we take and the larger kind we feel for what we give. In other words, our response of thanksgiving can focus on what God has done for us, or it can go on to the next step of finding tangible ways of expressing that thanks, both individually and as a church. It's a matter of how warm our hands are in trying to grab the sticks of thanksgiving. If practically numb, you grab a few and you head inside. If you have warm hands and sensitivity in them, you can grab a hold of many more, and you can do a lot more with them. Are we cold and only sensitized to God enough to give him thanks for our blessings, or are we warmer and more in touch with him and with others to be able to be a bearer of blessings to others? We know the voice of our shepherd and know that he seeks us out wherever we go and however badly we mess up our lives. The challenge this Thanksgiving and throughout the rest of the year is to become more Christ-like and to move beyond thanking him for what he's done for us to the point where we start watching for ways to be like him and nurture and protect others. Who are they? Well, that's where the sensitivity comes in and how willing we are to seek them out. Jesus said, So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. And if we're to be numbered as one of his flock, we will look for ways to respond, moving from cold and numbness to a warmth and sensitivity that's not satisfied with 99 out of 100, but seeks blessings and care for all. May God continue to bless us to the point where we move beyond thankfulness to seeking out the lost and lonely, just as he does. Let us pray. O Christ, who watches over us all, we give you thanks for caring for us as a people and as individuals. Help us to be more grateful, to be aware of our blessings, and to find a way of bringing more blessings to those in need. For we pray in your name, amen.
Let us use the Apostles' Creed to state our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Again, welcome to worship. It's good to have you here in the sanctuary, and it's good to be seen by those who are watching at home. We're glad that you're here, and there are a few announcements that I'd like to highlight today. Right after church, the deacons are going to be assembling their Thanksgiving baskets for our food pantry patrons in the fellowship hall right after worship, and we want to thank everyone who's made a donation of turkey or uh, side dishes to go with it. Uh, Don't forget that the Daisy Row Christmas shop is going to be open Saturday, the next two Saturdays from nine to noon uh, with all kinds of Christmas decorations in there if you'd like to go peruse it. Uh, This afternoon, Debbie Anderson is going to be giving a talk down at the Branchville Historical Society about the history of this church. Uh, That's in the municipal building, I believe, at 3 o'clock. Should be fascinating. Next week is the first Sunday of Advent. We will begin the countdown to Christmas. Uh, We will have the candle lightings and all of that, and in two weeks is the greening of the church. Mrs. Claus will again be making her appearance, and right after the uh, service there will be wassail over in the fellowship hall, Uh, that's a drink, not a dance. Uh, We'll be making gingerbread houses uh, right after coffee hour, forming a little village, so children of all ages are invited to help out with that. Let's take a little bit of time now for prayer, including those that we have named online this past week, and uh, this morning on our prayer concern list uh, that you added to in the back of the narthex. Those names include Dave Marion, Irene, Eileen, Les Guile, up in the Bentley, who's now in hospice, and let's keep him and his wife, Debbie, who's going through this with him in our prayers. Stephanie and Jeff and Molly, Larry, Dan, Reverend Keyes, and Mark, Mary Ahern and her family after the loss of their husband and loving father. Prayers for Tracy Gibbons Okeson and uh, also those on our prayer list, Ann Montat, Uh, the family of Trish Cherney after her mom's passing this past week. Fred Wheeler and Esther Wheeler, Mackenzie Decker, Ron and Harriet Gibbons, Marge Crone, who is uh, Nancy Young's mother, who's recovering from an angioplasty, Danny Cantwine, Bill Allison, who's recovering from heart surgery, the Vaughn family, Jen Van Kirk, uh, parentheses, uh, that she has cancer, Beth and Ethan, Karen M, Rita, Ruth B, Trish C, and Barbara Z. So let's take a little bit of time now to pray silently for these folks and any other prayer concerns that we have, followed by a prayer of thanksgiving and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Great God, in you is more love than we can imagine and more grace than we could ever hope for. You've shown yourself in Jesus Christ 
as a God who meets us where we are and loves us as we are. We're glad for this day and this season and grateful for your many blessings. You bring good things into our lives, more than we can name, more than we can number. You give us true life, sustaining our souls and meeting our deepest needs and accompany us on our way. Thank you for your abundant faithfulness. Our hearts are full of many things today. We know of some who need your special care and presence, and sometimes it's we who need that care. Some need healing, some need encouragement, some need comfort, some need assurance, and we all need hope. So we turn to you asking you to hear our prayers and grant what we need for the living of these days. So we pray for our nation. We pray for renewed commitments to our common life. Refresh us in the values of your heart, justice, righteousness, compassion, mercy, and peace. Help us to find a unity of purpose as citizens and neighbors. We pray for your church in places near and far, especially for your children in war-torn Ukraine and in other countries where danger is always present. May your grace continually refresh and empower your people to extend the love of Jesus to all. Here are prayers as we pray for our, our denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA, for the clarity of our witness and the success of our mission through each and every one of its churches. We pray for our congregation here, for our life together, and for our efforts to follow in the way of Jesus. Hear us, Lord. Hold us, heal us, and help us for the sake of our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With gratitude for God's faithfulness and with thanksgiving for all that we have received, let us now bring our gifts to God. This is also stewardship season, and if you haven't turned in your pledge card yet, they're available on the back of the pew in front of you. Those at home, we encourage you to use one of the ways listed in the bulletin, and those here in the sanctuary will use the plates when they're passed. Thank you. Ushers, please come forward now to receive the morning offering.
Let us pray. O oh God, with faith and hope we offer these gifts. Use them, even as you use us, to accomplish your purposes in Jesus Christ, the head of the church and the Lord of our lives. Amen. Those at home, please take a moment to send greetings, even if you're worshiping with us using a recording. And those here in the sanctuary, please take a moment to greet your neighbors. So let us go now, our hearts so full of blessings and thankfulness that it can't help but spill over to others. Let us go in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who's with us now and forevermore. Amen.
how loud they are. 